Hi again. After we have passed through the theory behind RIP, it is time now to do the first lab to enable RIP in our network. So this lab will be based on the same diagram that I showed you in the previous lecture. Okay, let's go point by point and see what we have to do. As you can see here, this is the diagram that we are going to work in this lab to enable RIP on each of these routers. So it's the same one that we were working on in the previous lectures when I was explaining the theory behind the RIP, okay? We have router 1 and we have router 2 here, we have router 3 and they are all connected together. Router 1 is connected to router 2, router 2 connected to router 3 and these are the IP addresses as you can see here. And router 1 is connected to a network which is 1.1.1.0 and here I created a bridge interface which is 1.1.1.1 and from this side router 3 has a network of 3.3.3.0 which also have a bridge here I created a bridge for it of an IP address of 3.3.3.3 okay so the idea is to create or to enable RIP on all those routers so router 1 it will be able to reach this network 3.3.3.3 and router 3 also to be able to reach this network so this is really what we need to do in this lab Let's go directly and see what we have to do point by point. Let's see now the steps that we have to go through to be able to make this lab. Point number one. All IP addresses have been set as per the graph. Okay. I have uh, put already the graph. You can see it uh, over my head. Okay. Then in this case, when I'm doing the configuration, you can have a look uh, of the IP addresses that if I'm changing or the route, it's always recommended and it's always good that you have the diagram in front of you to be able to follow the lab. Okay. So all IP addresses have been set. Point number two, we have to check if the IP addresses that we have set are correct by issuing ping from router one to router two and from router two to router three. Okay. So let's do that. Let me go directly to router one. And uh, from here, from router 1, I go to IP addresses first, and we see that we have already set the IPs as it is shown in the graph. Of course, you can see this IP address over here is the IP address to, for me to be able to connect to GNS3 MicroTik R1 router. And this is the IP which is for Ethernet 1, as you can see, 192.168.12.1. Now let me ping from router 1 to router 2. So I do ping 192.168 dot one two dot two okay and i have a ping reply which is very good that's from router one and also they ask us to do from router two also a ping to router three then i go to router two now and i go to the terminal here and i ping one nine two one six eight dot two three dot three and i also have reply Okay, that means that the IP addresses that I have set are correct. Okay. So point number one and point number two are done correctly. Okay. Point number three. Ping from router one with a source address of 1.1.1.1 to 3.3.3.3. Do you have a reply? So let me just show you here what we have, uh, what they are asking us to do. Okay. You have ping from router 1 to router 2, that's good. And you have ping from router 2 to router 3, that's also good. But now what if we have to ping from router 1 to this network, 3.3.3.3, and we need to make the ping to come from the source IP address of 1.1.1.1. Okay, so router 1 will try to ping the network 3.3.3.3 from its interface, which is bridge 1 here, having the IP address of 1.1.1.1. Does it work? So this is really the question that they are asking us now to do. Okay, let's go directly and check. From router 1, if I do ping to 3.3.3.3 from the source address of 1.1.1.1. Alright, as you can see, there is no ping because there is no route. There is no, you can see, no, no route to host. Router 1 doesn't know how to reach this network because this network is not in its routing table. And we can justify here if we go inside IP route on Router 1, you can see the only routes which are known by Router 1 are those which are connected. You can see here DAC, okay, that's dynamic active connected. Okay, and remember we said that every 
uh, network which is connected to the router is the one which is pr preferable. Okay, bridge one is connected to the router, Ethernet one is connected to the router, and Ethernet two is connected to the router, so he puts them inside the routing table. Anything other than this, he, he doesn't see here the network 3.3.3.0. Okay, then we made the ping from router 1 to, with the source address of 1.1.1.1 to 3.0.0.0.3. We made it. Do you have a reply? No, we don't have. So this step is done. We don't have a reply. Now, the steps that has to follow now is to let router 1 be able to ping the network of router 3, which is 3.3.3.0, or the IP address of the bridge, which is 3.3.3.3. Okay. Now, Configure RIP on router 1, on router 2, and on router 3. Let's go directly to router 1 and configure RIP. How do we configure RIP? Remember, I j let me just show you here what we have to do, okay? If we want now to enable RIP on router 1, what we need to do is we have to advertise all connected interfaces inside RIP. So this is one connected interface, we have to advertise it inside RIP. Also, this connected interface, we have to advertise it inside RIP. That means that we have to say that this network, which is 1.1.1.0, has to be advertised in RIP. And this network, which is 192.1.2.0, has to be advertised in RIP. The same we do here, okay, on router 2. For those two networks, this network here and this network here. And the same for router 3, this network and this network. When we put all those interfaces, although all those networks which are connected to each of the router inside RIP, then if you remember, if you recall about what we have discussed when it sent the routing update every 30 seconds the routers, then in this case, every router will be sending the routing table to the neighbor router and the neighbor router will learn the networks which are not connected uh, to him. In this case, Router 1 will be able to learn the network of 3.3.3.3 because Router 3 will update Router 2 about his network here and Router 2 will update Router 1 about 3.3.3.0 network. Okay, so this is really what we need to do to enable RIP on our network. Now let's go directly to Router 1 and start. What we need to do now is to go to Routing and from here we have to go to RIP. Okay, Routing and then RIP. We're going to go through uh, those tabs, but at this moment for this lab, what we need to do is to advertise the networks which are connected to router one. Here we go to networks and we say plus. And from here, I say the first network which is connected to router one is 1.1.1.0 slash 24, right? Look at the picture, you can see that this is connected to router one. And the second network which is connected to router 1 is 192.168.12.0.24. And that's it. Okay, you can see it till now. The router 1 knows only in his RIP uh, table, routing table, he knows only those two networks that we have just advertised them. Okay, so this is the work finished on router 1. If we go to router 2 now, and we do the same work. Again, we go to routing, we go to RIP. And then from here, inside network plus, the first network which is connected to router 2 is 192.168.12.0.24. And then the second network is 192.168.23.0.24. Alright. At this moment, I think that router 2 should already know about 1.1.1.1. You can see. They already exchanged now the writing table together, router and router 2, because both of them are on the RIP process now. And both of them, they already have connectivity with IPs. We have tried to make ping. Of course, you cannot enable RIP if you don't have connectivity between the two routers, okay? That's uh, something you have to not forget. All right. In this case, now router 2 knows how to reach 1.1.1.1. But router 3, still not. Okay, let's go now to make the last configuration for RIP, and that's this time on router 3. Again, on router 3, we go to routing, we go to RIP, and from network, I will say the connected network to router 3 are um, 192.168.23.0.24, and the network of 3.3.3.0.24, .3 .3 .3 .3 .3 .3 
slash 24. You have to advertise the network, okay? And that's it. Now, router 1 is have rip enable. Router 2 has rip enable. Router 3 has rip enable. Then in this case, we are now still on router 3. Router 3, if we did the configuration correctly, he should know how to reach now 1.1.1.1. To check, we can go to route and you can see directly that 1.1.1.0 has been shown inside the RIP process or inside the RIP ta routing table for router 3. And look at here, he say, to be able to reach 1.1.1.1 or 1.1.1.0, the network, huh, I need the metric 3. Remember, what is a 3? If you remember what we have discussed in the concept, 3 is the hop count. Okay. Let's look here again, and if I look here again, router 3 is saying, for me to be able to reach 1.1.1.0, I need to go 1 hop, 2 hop, and 3 hops. And that's why you can see the metric is 3. Okay? Alright, let's go now back to the lab and, and see what they're asking us. Alright, so we have to configure RIP on the three routers, which we did. And that's okay. Now check the RIP routing tables. And now I want to check it on each of the routers. Let's go first to the router 1. And then from here I go to, again, routing and RIP. Okay, here is the route. You can see that he now knows how to reach 3.3.3.0. And he said that he needs 3 hops to reach to there. And as you can see in the graph, you can count them from router 1, one hop to router 2, one hop to router 3, and one hop to 3.3.3.0. That's three hops. Okay. Um, to reach 192.168.12, he needs one hop, which it's connected to it. And to reach 192.168.23.0, he needs two hops. Okay. Uh, because he needs to go from router 1 to router 2, and then from router 2 to the network 192.168.2.0. Okay, that is um, for router 1, router 2, routing, rip, and we check the route here. Again, he knows now about th those two networks, which are for router 1 and for router 3. Okay, and he has two hops to read them. And then you have router 3 at the end, routing rip. Again, we've seen that he needs three hops to reach this network. And then here he needs two hops to reach 192.168.12.0. Okay. Now, this step is also done. Now, what we need to do, we need to ping now from router 1 to 3.3.3.3. .3 and I will also use the source address 1.1.1.1. And we see if we have a reply. Okay. This is router 1 now. From here, I will say ping 3.3.3.3 from the source address of 1.1.1.1. And as you can see, I have a reply. The same if I go to router 3 also. This is router 3. And I also ping to 1.1.1.1 from source address 3.3.3.3. Then also we have a ping reply, it's reachable, which is good. Okay, so this is the lab, we have just done it, it's finished now. Before we just finish it, I just want to show you one more thing here. If we go back to router 1, what you can do also is you can look inside the IP route here. IP route, okay? And inside IP route, you can see this DAR, okay? And that means that it's in dynamic active RIP, all right? So that means that this entry inside the routing table of reaching 3.3.3.0, it is learned from the RIP. All right. And the same here for this network and the rest are connected. So this is what I wanted to show you in this lab. As you can see, the process is quite easy. We only need to enable RIP and advertise all the connected uh, networks of each of the routers. We need to advertise them inside RIP. And then RIP can do the work for us without the need to for us to go and make like we have done on the static and static default route that we need to create 
for every route we have to create it manually. This is done by itself and this is why we call it a dynamic route. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, lab and I see you in the upcoming video.